Can you believe it, Gabe? Sure. I believe what? This is the 50th episode of Jack Russell Parent. I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. That's right, puppy parents. Apparently, time itself is having the zoomies because it seems like just yesterday we released our trailer and began this fuss-filled journey with you all. Thank you so much for your love and support. It's been awesome. Yes, we truly wouldn't have been able to make it through all these early morning recording sessions. And late night editing sessions. (laughs) Yes, all the sessions, none of it would have been possible without all of your love and support. So from the bottom of our dog-loving hearts, we thank you. So Becca, what has been your favorite thing about podcasting so far? Oh, I really love the interviews. I've loved meeting such talented and friendly people. And our interviewees bring this knowledge and insight and a lot of joy (laughs) to the Jack Russell Parents podcast and the doggy world as a whole. They just know so much and they've really added a layer of depth, I think, to our program. And it's amazing to me that we have had the opportunity to talk to people in other parts of the world and we are united by our love for dogs. So Gabe, what is your favorite part? I love doing something artsy with you again. It's how we met and fell in love. So it's definitely feels like we're getting back to our roots. Mm -hmm. So despite all the great things about this newish artsy venture, has anything been a struggle for you? Yeah, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Any one thing? Okay, let's see. I think I can encapsulate it in this one phrase. Work-life balance. Yeah. Right. That has been hard. So, you know, how do we find the hours in the week to put together an engaging and insightful show for our listeners? And, you know, our goal really is to entertain and bring joy through talking about dogs and all things dogs. So I, I hope we are accomplishing that. And the truth is, is our show is meant to be really upbeat and requires a lot of energy. And some days I'm just dragging. I'm not feeling it, you guys. I'm just like... <laughs> Welcome to my world. I don't know if I can do this today. You know, how many five-hour energies have I drank just to sound upbeat for (laughs) y'all? So the the struggle is real. And because sometimes I'm just tired. (laughs) Speaking of tired, I'm happy to say that we've been incredibly consistent in releasing episodes. We've never been Mm -hmm. late. Yeah. And part of the reason has been staying up as late as it takes to finish editing and polishing episodes. I think the closest we've ever come to being late was staying up after one on a Sunday night to get the episode out at 5 a.m. Monday morning, about the time when I have to wake up for work. So yeah, that's brutal for someone who's no longer in their early 20s. (laughs) So we are putting in all this hard work because we love what we do. We really do. And we love engaging with all of you listeners and getting to know you and getting to have these special guests on our show. And so in honor of this amazing journey we have been on with you, dear listeners, let's take a listen to our first episode to see how far we have come. Welcome to our first official episode. We are so thrilled to be here today. Hey, everybody. We love all dogs, but since we are the Jack Russell parents, we thought it was fitting to begin by celebrating the Jack Russell breed. We are by no means experts. No, we're not dog experts. Just want to make that clear, but we're we... experts of our own experience. <laughs> Right. So we're going to tell you what we know from life experience as well as research. There is a great Jack Russell Terrier overview from hillspet.com that we're going to take a look at today to find out all the best furry factoids about Jack Russells. And I think this is a great article because those of you who own Jack Russells will be 
able to relate totally. And those of you thinking about getting one, hopefully this will help you decide. It starts with some really basic facts, even just how much they weigh, which is something to consider depending upon what size dog you want. Both male and female Jack Russells are often about 13 to 17 pounds on average. Carson got a little bit over that during the holidays. (laughs) (laughs) He's had one too many cookies. And he was like kind of in hibernation mode. Yeah, yeah. So so he's a little bit over that average weight. So we're working on that. Um, And then... It talks about like expectations of the breed. So exercise requirements. It says 40 minutes a day, which actually kind of makes me laugh because that is not enough for Carson. (laughs) (laughs) No, he'll spend that running around just outside. But I mean, we can I can never sit on the couch and just watch TV without throwing the ball down the hallway. And and honestly, that could last three or four hours before he's finally tired. Right. Yeah. Plus walks. And so that that is a minimum requirement, y'all. It's going to be a lot more than that. Um, and then it says energy level. Very energetic. Yes. Wow. <laughs> is there a word that's stronger than very? <laughs> Uh, They have so much energy. Uh, Longevity range. This is awesome because they can live for 13 to 15 years on average. So if you want a good, you know, family pet to stay with you for a long time and as your kids grow up, this is is a good one to choose. I think the, the world record for a Jack Russell Terrier was over 22 years. Wow. And our last Jack Russell, um, you know, Wiggles, he lasted about 17 and a half. Yeah. And I, I feel like if you if you exercise them, you give them a good diet, they're going to last. You can get a Jack Russell when you have a baby and they'll last all the way through high school and they can just um, be a constant companion for your children. Absolutely. Yeah. Then it talks about tendency to drool and tendency to snore. Those are both low. <laughs> so what about tendency to dream? Oh, well, it doesn't Car- say. <laughs> Carson dreams. Like every night, he's barking at something. Uh, I, I I like to think that they're happy dreams. He's he's so. playing. Yeah, but no drool, which is nice. Um, and, and other than no snoring, but a, f- a few dreams. So social attention needs. It says is moderate. Uh, I I think so. I mean, he he likes attention from us more than anything else. I mean, we'll take him to the dog park, and he'll be like, "Hey, dogs." Okay, now play with me. Throw the ball like we do at home. He, yeah, he, he loves people. He ignores dogs. Remember the time we uh, we were watching the video from uh, the the pet resort that we had had brought him to. Mm-hmm. He was only playing with the the minders, the mm-hmm. the humans. He ignores other dogs mostly. Yeah, and then Jack Russell Terriers come in three different coat types: smooth, broken, and rough. And so Carson, our Carson, is a smooth coat. And then we move into like the history of a Jack Russell, which is really interesting. So the Jack Russell Terrier is a true working terrier. The breed takes its name from the Reverend John Russell, who bred one of the finest strains of terriers for working fox in England. The Jack Russell is a baying terrier, meaning the dog should flush out the fox with his steady barking, but is never to kill his prey. The Jack Russell has been strictly bred for hunting since beginning in the early 1800s. And when I read this, I thought... Aha. Hint, that is where all the barking comes from. A steady barking, yes. And he will he will do this if, if a ball rolls under the couch, he will bark at it until and, we get it. <laughs> or he wants a cookie, he'll go stand by the cookie jar and he will bark until he gets it. Yes. He he is baying it out. <laughs> and it it's works. It's effective. Barking the cookie out of the jar. <laughs> Another interesting furry factoid is that because of their broad genetic makeup, there are some variances in the the breed. In fact, there's often a disagreement about leg length, um, where the longer leg dogs are called Parson Jack Russell Terriers, and the shorter leg dogs are called um, simply Jack Russell Terriers. And so our Carson is a Parson, and he he has those longer legs, and we even made up a song about that that we sang to him. <laughs> I don't think he appreciated it very much. Would you like to sing I it? I don't want to sing you know it. What? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing it. Okay. Carson. I, I don't got the tune. <laughs> You're not a Jack Russell, Carson. You're not a Jack Russell, Carson. 
You're, you're just, just a Parsons. Parsons, not a Jack Russell Terrier dog. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you're just as annoyed as he is. When he <laughs> I don't think he appreciates that. <laughs> <laughs> so, truth be told, he is a Jack Russell. He's just a Parsons Jack Russell. And that's okay. We love so them all. He's a PJRT. Yeah. And then personality of the Jack Russell. So Jack Russell's personalities are huge. You know, it says here in this that it's a ha- they're happy, energetic dogs with a strong desire to work. The breed is most happy when given companionship and a job to do. And and this other part says you will never win a battle of wills with a Jack Russell. Oh that my is gosh, that's a lesson absolutely learned. Absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> When they when they have their their mind set on something, dude, that's you have to distract them and and get them wanting something else because you can't change their mind. Yeah, and I know that when we first got Carson, a lot of people would tell us, you know, this is hard when we first got him because he was not obedient and it, it took a lot. And so people would say, "Well, just be firm." And I'm like, "Oh, listen, <laughs> you don't get it. He he will." up you one if you're firm he's firmer like if that was not the best that positive affirmation is really and rewarding good behavior we have found is the best way to train them and that often can take a little longer uh the jack russell terrier needs lots of exercise like we said before and it's best that they have a home with a large fenced yard some uh, Jack Russell owners have acreage or even have them on farms, and they that's best, honestly, because they get to run and play. But if they are kept indoors, if they are an indoor dog, take them on lots of walks, you know, get them get them out, um, take them hiking with you. <laughs> that was never hard for us because we never lived on the first floor. <laughs> so <laughs> we were up and down those stairs many, many times, not just for, for restroom, uh, but also just he needs to be, they need to be outside. Jack Russells Mm -hmm. need lots of exercise. So finally have a yard. It's so much easier to keep him happy. Yes, yes. You know, a lot of people will say, this is not a breed for you if you prefer a dog who will sit peacefully on the couch all day. That's Um, generally true. That's generally true until they get, you know, into their old age maybe. But with all those facts in mind about Jack Russells, we would have to say that Carson has really matured us. Over the last six years, which very was much, no small task on his part. Uh, but we've we've learned a lot, and I think in a lot of ways he has saved us. Now's a good time for a commercial break. We will be right back. Aloha, Mama Apparel wants to spread the spirit of Aloha. Genesis Beloth, the creator of Aloha Mama Apparel, was born on the mainland and resides in Southern California. But she cherishes her Hawaiian culture and honors the half of her family that lives on the island. She loves being a mama and a designer. At Aloha Mama, they know being a mama is hard work. It's the best work. That's why they style mamas and kiddos in apparel that is bright and filled with beachy vibes. For the cutest casual attire celebrating the spirit of Aloha, go to shopalohamama.com. That's shop, A-L-O-H-A-M-A-M-A.com. Shopalohamama.com. So speaking of life-saving dogs, we have a genuine life-saving dog in the news today for Dog News. Awesome. Let's hear about it. Story from CNN. A New Jersey man ends up getting rescued by the dog that he rescued. Sadie, a 100-pound German Shepherd. Can you imagine a 100-pound dog? That's a big dog. (laughs) Gosh. All right. So she's been turned away by three shelters. They just can't place her. She's huge, first of all. And then she has all this anxiety especially around men because of you know everything she's been through so one day uh a man walks in brian and amazingly this dog sadie and and him just bond out of nowhere just like instant best friends and everyone is shocked they're blown away because they for sure thought that if she could get placed that she would end up with a woman uh well he takes the dog home pandemic hits so they're alone a lot together 
you know, and after about three months of bonding and training with this dog, they worked out all her anxiety issues. And then she, you know, she just becomes this amazing, wonderful dog um, that she, she always was on the inside. So poor Brian, he contracts COVID uh, earlier um, this year. He recovers. And then uh, one day, January 18th, he wakes up and then his, his, he felt his legs give out. He falls between his bed and the wall and he's stuck there. Like, can't reach a phone, doesn't know how he's ever going to get saved, right? And then Sadie, who loves him to death, she starts freaking out, right? Because she knows he's in trouble, right? She comes over and so he starts consoling her, petting her, right? Trying to calm her down after all, everything she's been through. And then... He, ends, he grabs her collar and she ends up dragging him, just instinctually just drags him to where his phone is. And then he can grab it and call for help. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? It's amazing their intuition, right? Like how much they really know and can sense. That's, that's she, incredible. And she was like, he needs a phone. Mm-hmm. He's got to get to the phone. I'm going to drag him to the phone. Right. So he, you know, he goes to rehab. He gets better. And then... Um, three weeks later, they're reunited, and she's jumping all over him, knocking his mask <laughs> off because well, they're in public, and and he's just like, I love this dog. Oh, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And he's planning to write a children's book about Sadie. Can't wait to read it. This next segment is our live segment where we are going to – be either on the road or visiting a location, a location that may be good for your pups. And as I'm sure you can probably tell from the sound of my voice, it is the morning hour. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. It's been a long week. We're kind of sluggish and we need some coffee, frankly, some strong coffee, not just my homemade version. Oh my goodness, look at the line. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, Now that we're in line, Gabe, why don't you tell us uh, what we like to get Carson at Starbucks from time to time. Oh, the good old puppuccino. Yes, a puppuccino. So this is uh, a popular item. It's technically on the secret menu at Starbucks, but it's not much of a secret anymore. I think a lot of people know about puppuccinos. If you just get on social media at some point, it'll come across your page. It's because it's just fun to say. It is fun. Puppuccino. <laughs> We have a three-year-old niece, and it is the cutest thing to hear her say, Puppuccino. It's a Puppuccino. I about died when they came to visit, and we came to Starbucks, and they they got a Puppuccino for their kids. (laughs) (laughs) And it it was so cute. They shared it, you know, and they just scooped up this, this whipped cream. Several days later, we went to a restaurant, and she had ice cream that was loaded with whipped cream. And she's like, it's a Puppuccino. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, we're we're possibly about to order. Let's see. For those of you who don't know, a puppuccino is just a small cup of Starbucks whipped cream. So it's just made of cream and a little bit of sugar. And I know that some dogs probably can't have dairy and probably shouldn't have sugar very much either. How can I help you today? Yeah, can I get a tall bold with extra cream? Yeah, for sure. What else for you? Can I get a grande americano? But can you put heavy cream in it? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Anything else? Yes, we would also like a puppuccino. For sure. Anything else? (laughs) That'll do it. That'll do it. Thank you. All right. It'll be 606 at the window. Thank you. Okay, here's the first sip. It's going to make us feel better. I swear I would never be one of those people who grew up and couldn't function before a cup of coffee in the morning. Fail. Here I am. Here I am. I can't. I seriously. I'm cranky now without it. It's bad. It's bad habit. I promise next time our live segment will not be such a grumpy one. So we'll have our coffee before we start <laughs> talking to you. Check out our social media at JRT Podcast for a cute pic of Carson enjoying his puppuccino from this morning. I have a feeling he's going to be a little less cranky after that as well. We asked other JRT owners on Facebook, why did you choose your JRT? And we got the best stories. I wish we had time to tell all of them, uh, because they're so endearing and wonderful. But we are going to share a few with you now. The first one comes from Lorena. 
I chose a JRT because I loved Milo from The Mask. Such a big attitude in a small body. I'm a pretty active person, so I wanted a friend who can go hiking, walking, work out with me. I was looking at pictures, and I liked the tricolor ones with the black on them. I looked for months, and I wasn't finding what I wanted um, until I saw Julio on a picture five hours away from me. I needed to meet him in person to see if there was a connection, and of course, I saw him, and it was over. I was in love. He makes me so happy when I'm feeling off. He's a ball of energy, just like me. He cured my depression immediately. He gave me a reason to wake up in the morning and work hard because now I have a baby to take care of. Best decision ever. That is an awesome story, Lorena. We are so happy that he brings you such joy. The next one comes from Indalika. She said, I just wanted a friend for my daughter. I do not have experience with dogs. All I knew was that I wanted a small breed, a lazy indoor kind. <laughs> <laughs> it's already funny. <laughs> I looked for breeders. I saw a cute puppy. And, and where they live, they currently have a grumpy neighbors who don't like dogs. Uh, but they got s saint nonetheless. Uh, he's loyal, funny, protective, and loud. <laughs> he's alert and hashtag active. He makes us laugh every day and probably to the chagrin of the neighbors. <laughs> the next story is from Melody. She said, I went to the breeder's house to pick one out. When they showed me all of the puppies, Radar came right up to me and sat down at my feet and my heart melted. I felt the same way. Uh, we saw a picture of Carson before we got him, and he melted my heart then. And then when I saw him in person, I just about died. Cecilia G. says, I was originally looking to get another emotional support pet for my kids with autism. We already had a kitten and needed a puppy to join while the kitty was still young and could adapt. We needed young ones as my kids both had somewhat fear of animals, and I did not want to rescue if at all possible. I knew nothing about jacks, nothing about dogs at all, actually, and I just wanted to purchase all the needed items and food. She Googled the breed, got quite a few warnings, and raised eyebrows from people when uh, she told them that she got a jack. She says, I think it was even in this Facebook group that someone told her that uh, a jack is not an entry-level <laughs> dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, uh, Peanut uh, is ended up being the name. Peanut has rescued her family many times over and is the best little boy ever. He has so much trouble with stealing all he can and only listens when he wants to, but he's the best, best boy and is so very loved. I think that's absolutely wonderful that you found a dog that could be that emotional support for your kids. We have uh, friends who have... Um, children with autism, and we know what a huge benefit a pet can be. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun dog loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. <laughs> We'd love to connect with you online at jackrusselparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier podcast. The Jack Russell Parents podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrusselparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm -hmm.